Picture this. You're in the middle of class, staring at your notes, maybe half paying attention to the lecture when suddenly, bang, a door slams shut. The air gets heavy and then you hear it. This is not a drill. Your heart sinks and a question flashes through your mind. What would you do if you were trapped in a lockdown? Let's dive into three terrifying stories that show how quickly an ordinary day on campus can spiral into horror. Southridge University. The day piece turned to panic. It's early spring at Southridge University, the type of day where everything feels just a bit more relaxed. The sky is clear, students are heading to classes, and there's a slight buzz of excitement in the air. No one suspects the terror that's about to unfold. Just before 7.30 a.m., chaos erupts in a dormitory. Two students are gunned down before anyone even understands what's happening, but the rest of campus is blissfully unaware until the nightmare truly begins. At 9.45 a.m., everything changes. David Cho, a student with a deep grudge, walks into Eastman Hall, a classroom building filled with students and professors. He locks the doors from the inside. Now imagine this, you're sitting in class, hearing what you think is construction noise, only to realize moments later it's gunfire, and it's getting closer. Cho begins his massacre. He moves methodically from room to room, his gun pointed at students and teachers who have no time to react. Panic takes over. Students barricade themselves inside classrooms using desks, chairs, anything to block the doors. The sound of footsteps fills the air, punctuated by the deafening cracks of gunfire. Your pulse races as you hear screams from down the hall. You know he's coming closer. What do you do? Do you hide under a desk, hoping you won't be found? Do you text your loved ones, unsure if it's the last message you'll ever send? In the end, 33 people won't make it home. When it's finally over, Cho takes his own life, leaving a wake of devastation. The survivors? They'll never forget the fear that came with those footsteps, or the silence that followed. West Coast University, a grudge that turned deadly. Now let's head to the prestigious West Coast University. It's June 2nd, a typical sunny day in California. You're a student there, maybe grabbing a coffee between classes, thinking about what you'll do over summer break. The last thing on your mind is the possibility of a lockdown, but that's about to change. Suddenly, you hear the announcement, this is not a drill. Lockdown immediately. A former student, Marcus Sarin, has entered the campus, fueled by anger and revenge. He's just gunned down Professor William Kloss in his office, a man Marcus blames for ruining his academic career. But here's the terrifying part. No one knows if Marcus is acting alone. You rush into a classroom, locking the door behind you, heart pounding. The fear is suffocating. Rumors spread through texts and social media. Is there more than one shooter? Is he coming to my building? Every sound outside the door feels like a threat. You and your classmates push desks and chairs against the door, hoping it'll hold. Minutes stretch into hours, each second more excruciating than the last. Imagine staring at the door, wondering if it's about to burst open at any moment. The silence grows heavier with every passing minute. The unknown is what gnaws at you. There's no way of knowing if you'll survive. Eventually, police storm the building and find Marcus, who has taken his own life. But the panic? That stays with you. You may walk out of that classroom physically unharmed, but you'll never forget the paralyzing fear. River Valley College, the 13-minute rampage. Let's go back to the summer of 2013. It's June 8th at River Valley College, a small campus nestled in a quiet town. Everything feels normal. The sun is shining, students are making their way to class. No one suspects the terror that's about to rip through their school. John Zahari, armed with multiple firearms, begins his rampage before he even reaches campus, killing two of his family members and setting his house ablaze. His next stop? The college. You're walking across the campus courtyard when suddenly gunshots echo in the air. Panic spreads like wildfire. You freeze, unsure of what to do as students run in every direction some screaming, others in stunned silence. The shooter makes his way to the library. That's when the real nightmare begins. Imagine sitting in the library hearing the unmistakable sound of gunshots growing louder. The doors are locked, but deep down, you know it's only a matter of time before the gunman reaches you. Everyone around you is hiding under tables, huddled together in corners, too terrified to move. The shooter gets closer. Each shot feels like a countdown to your last moment. In 13 minutes, five lives are stolen. 
The gunman's rampage only ends when he's taken down in a final shootout with police. But what about you? You'll walk out of that library, but a part of you will always be trapped in that room, replaying those 13 minutes over and over again. These events, they could happen anywhere. South Ridge, West Coast, River Valley. Three different schools, three ordinary days turned into the worst day of someone's life. The next time you hear the words, this is not a drill, it won't feel like a practice anymore. The fear will be real, the stakes higher than you could ever imagine. Lockdowns aren't just drills, they're a terrifying reality. And the question you need to ask yourself is, what would you do if it happened to you? You've just heard three terrifying stories that show how easily a peaceful campus can turn into a scene of horror. Now I want you to think about this. Have you ever thought about how you'd react in a real lockdown? These events, they aren't just distant news stories. They could happen anywhere, at any time. If you found this video helpful or eye-opening, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more real stories. And don't forget to ring the bell to stay updated. Most importantly, stay aware, stay safe. You never know when these events might happen next.